Hello everybody and welcome back. We are continuing our intro to chemistry unit today by talking about scientific measurements and also we're going to be reviewing scientific notation because we are going to use that a lot in this course. So it's very important that we just refresh ourselves um, about what scientific notation is and how to write in scientific notation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now one of our intro um, lessons is just to review the scientific method, right? So the process of solving a problem with experimentation. One of the last steps is to gather and analyze your data, right? So just a refresher, there are two different types of data that we need to know about in a science course. The first kind is qualitative data. So think of the quality of something. These are descriptions in words of what is being observed. So again, this is going to be the quality of something. And they are based on what we observe. Things like this can be color, odor, texture, etc. So I have a picture of a cute little panda bear down here. And if I was going to describe this panda bear with quality, qualitative data, I would say his fur is fuzzy. He's black and white. He smells like bamboo. I don't know what bamboo smells like, but just you get the gist, right? So you are describing the quality of something. Next we have quantitative observations. So quantitative, think of quantity. So these are going to be a measurement that you make or have, and these are going to deal with numbers. So think of quantity, count, quantitative data. So examples of this would be measuring length with a ruler, mass with a balance, temperature with a thermometer, or measuring volume with a flask. So we do just need to know the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. Okay. So we use the metric system in order to obtain and also read quantitative observations. So we measure volume in liters. Okay, so these are going to be the units um, so the base units of these measurements, volume is in liters, mass is in grams, length is in meters, and then temperature will be in Celsius, okay, so degrees Celsius. And we're going to talk on the next few slides about how we measure these things. Alright, so starting with mass, mass is just the amount of matter present, usually this is for solids, um, it is measured in grams, and we can use a scale or a triple beam balance in order to measure the mass of something. There are also digital scales now that are really prevalent in a lot of high schools, so you might have seen that. If we are going to measure the length of something, so how long it is, we are going to use again that base measurement of meters. So the base is going to be meters. And then we would use a ruler or a yardstick to measure that. Okay. Volume is just the amount of space that matter takes up. We usually use volume for liquids and gases because they're going to be taking up volume of something. We will measure this also in liters. And the tools that we would use to measure would be a graduated cylinder or a beaker. Now, if you don't remember how to measure with a graduated cylinder, remember there's the meniscus that you have to measure with, which is just that kind of like um, semicircle bubble that is created at the top where the water or whatever liquid is adhering to the sides of the graduated cylinder. And remember, we always just read to the bottom of the meniscus. So that should be a review, but if you have concerns about that, just let me know. And then temperature is the amount of energy present, so how hot or cold something is. We're going to measure this in Celsius, and we would use a thermometer to measure temperature. And then time is just a measurable period of time. Uh, the base unit, so the base metric unit, would be in seconds, and then we would use a stopwatch or a clock to measure that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then something else that we're going to be using in chemistry, this will be new to you guys, is the amount of particles. So when we get to unit five, we will start talking about how many particles are in a substance. And this is going to be measured by something called the mole. So not the mole like the animal, but it's mole, M-O-L. Um, and then this is usually calculated. So we are gonna do some math in this course and you guys are gonna eventually learn how to calculate that. All right, so those are just the measurement tools. Again, talking about base units, we're going to do some conversion with base units a little bit later. So, you know, this is going to be a continuous thing that we will 
refer back to over and over again in this course. So just a quick review of scientific notation. Sometimes numbers, especially in chemistry, can get really, really large because we're going to be talking about atoms, which are super small. So when we start talking about the number of particles in a substance, those numbers can get really huge. So to help us, just to keep everything clean, we are going to oftentimes write in scientific notation, okay? And this is just writing with exponents to help us, um, you know, simplify these numbers. So here's an example. You've got your coefficient with your first number, and then you're always going to times it by a base of 10, right? And then whatever this exponent is, is basically how many zeros you're going to have before or after your decimal point. Now, remember with scientific notation, something the really the only mistake I noticed from kiddos at this point in time, like at this level, is that sometimes kids don't know where to put the decimal for scientific notation. Remember the coefficient for um, scientific notation always needs to be between 1 and 10, okay? So like if you put the decimal place right here and made this coefficient 41, that would not be right, okay? So you always want it to be between 1 and 10. So I would put my decimal here between the 4 and the 1 to make it 4.1. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, but your first number should not be any higher than 10. Okay, it kind of defeats the purpose. So here are examples of scientific notation. Again, if you're converting from the number to scientific notation, you would just make sure to put your decimal place in between where your number would be between 1 and 10. So like here in this instance, I would put it between the 1 and the 5 because that would give me 1.5. And then you count up how many spaces there are and that's what you need to have uh, your exponent be. So like if we put our decimal here between the 1 and the 5, it's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. So it would be times 10 to the 9, okay? Um, and then for the smaller numbers, so if we're moving our decimal to the right, your exponent would be negative, okay? So a good rule of thumb for that to, to figure out if you've done it right, if your original number is above 1, you're going to have a positive exponent. If your original number is below 1, so if it's a decimal, you're going to have a negative exponent, okay? So if you have to move your decimal to the left, so if you have a number greater than one, you're going to have a positive exponent. If you have to move your decimal to the right, so your original number is below one, you're going to have a negative exponent, okay? And here are just those examples, okay? So again, we have those original numbers, and then you would just see where you need to put your decimal to make that first coefficient between 1 and 10, so I would put it between the 3 and the 4 here, so it'd be 3.4, and then I count how many I had to move it. So I went 1, 2, 3, I moved it 3 to the right, so that exponent would be negative, okay? And there are some more examples here for you. You guys are going to practice this in a short assignment today, um, and again, this is probably a review for you for scientific notation. I'm sure you've seen this before. But if you have it and that still is a little, you're not sure about it and you need some help, you can always come to office hours and we can walk through these together, okay? All right, so that is just your quick little intro onto scientific measurement. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And if not, I will catch you guys in our next lesson.